I'm Peter Block in Denver, Colorado at TCT for On the Scene. With me on my left is David Cohen. David is an old friend from Boston. David is now in Kansas City, the Mid-America Heart Institute, maybe going back to Boston sometime soon, but yes, in everyone. any case, now at Mid-America. And David has been interested in the financial side of transcatheter valve replacement since the get-go and the financial side of healthcare, period. So David, I know that you now are reporting on uh, partner two, which is a sort of intermediate risk patients, uh, where we were very concerned whether or not TAVR would or would not make it in terms of its cost compared to surgery. So what'd you find? So you're, you're right about the concern is there's many, many, you know, as you know, there's lots and lots of intermediate risk patients, many more than the high risk patients, many more than the extreme risk patients, where we had previously shown TAVR to be cost effective. So there's concerns anytime you're expanding the population who you're treating uh, about the financial viability, but for the healthcare system. So we did cost effectiveness studies alongside both the partner to a randomized trial, um, as well as the Sapien 3 intermediate risk registry. Uh, the analyses were very, very similar. The one thing that was different this time uh, compared to all the others is we did this actually even better than we've done before because we linked all the patients in the studies with their Medicare data. So we actually were able to follow them long term, get all of their costs, all of their rehab, all of their physician costs out to two years for everybody. Okay, so let me interrupt because and, and point out one thing, and this is comparison to surgical aortic valve replacement. Correct, yes. It's Again, the partner 2A was randomized, the Sapien 3 was non-randomized. Uh, what we found was the results were very similar, actually, for partner 2A and for Sapien 3. I'm going to focus on Sapien 3 because that's the valve that we use uh, nowadays. Uh, what we saw is during the initial hospitalization, TAVR already saved money. Now you say, how could that be? The TAVR valve cost $32,000, the surgical valve cost $5,000. Uh, the answer is, first of all, the procedures were two and a half hours shorter. Um, more importantly, the length of stay was six and a half days shorter, including three days of ICU stay, which is very expensive. So even by the time the patients left the hospital, it saved the health, it saved the, the healthcare system about $4,000. Now I'm going to interrupt, Dave, because that's sort of a little bit of a surprise. I would have said, well, maybe they'll catch up after the after they leave the hospital, but it is the length of hospitalization. Exactly. I mean, I was surprised as well. It wasn't quite that good in the Partner 2A randomized. In the Partner 2A randomized, um, it cost about $3,000 more, um, but still the gap was very narrow. Um, the really astounding thing, though, is what happens during follow-up. Um, and this we hadn't really seen before in the other studies, but now when we had all the Medicare data linked in, what we saw is in Sapien 3, between discharge and one-year follow-up, the costs were $11,000 less another $11,000 less. Um, all of that happened really in the first six months. It was basically reductions in cardiovascular hospitalizations, non-cardiovascular hospitalizations, and a lot of it was driven by rehab and skilled nursing facility stays. So by the end of one year already in the Sapien 3 intermediate risk trial, it saved the healthcare system $15,000. Yikes. Okay, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Particularly when you multiply that out. Exactly. Okay, so uh, a, lot of, a lot of people out there are gonna say, so what? So what's the so what answer? I think the so what is, again, it's a very expensive technology. People worry about when we introduce very expensive technologies. People are always asking, when is the price going to come down? Uh, I mean, I think the price will come down, um, but we are already achieving major cost savings. And that's very rare with new technologies. We never saw that with drug eluting stents. We never saw that with stents when they first came out. And in fact, we hadn't seen it in any other population with TAVR. It's because TAVR has gotten so good, so efficient, so quick, um, and you know, it, that it's really you know, paying for itself. And the patients do so well. They do so well. They do better. They survive better. Uh, they have better quality of life in the short term, equal quality of life in the long term. It's hard to find a flaw. Thank you, David.